meeting buyers and um, to try to get, you know, people that are on the front line actually that are dealing with and, um, you know, kind of what you saw there is my my uh, video report. And that is, you know, at least as of what, three weeks ago, people were still um, going through um, and, um, you know, still positive, a lot more precautions and everything. But, you know, I was that was really the only way that I could satisfy my requirements, you know, because when I do an appraisal, I have to certify, I have to make an opinion of where the market is, but I have to base it on something, right? And if there's no data over the last couple of weeks, you know, I, I basically, you know, chose that as my method. You know, since then I've got a little bit more, but uh, um, I, I, you know, I actually have some data over the last few weeks, um, but that was a very um, important um, step in my business because I needed to base an opinion on something even when there was nothing, you know, you know, no traditional data to utilize. So, um, so, so is that the picture that you gave us there is the, that that's actually, that's a, that's a different, uh, what that is, that's a different, that's a little project I worked on. That's not okay. related to this, um, but it gives an idea of how, um, the, um, the project, um, um, how data analytics, you know, is, works and, um, you know, the real estate valuation. That was a very simple project, but it was actually quite visual. Um, somebody wanted to, if you wanted me to tell a little bit about that, I'd be happy to, but it's a little bit different than, because um, that, that actually is historical, traditional data that I utilized. Okay, so, so that's what you do normally, right? Is you use the traditional yeah. historical data? So let's pull that up and you can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, brief background. There's a, um, in Florida, there's a, um, a golf community that was built around 1990. Um, back in its days, it had great amenities, but now it's really stagnant. It's um, all its amenities were not updated. You know, it's got a smaller kitchen. It doesn't have pickleball. It doesn't have all the things that buyers want today. They're, the members are thinking of, um, of uh, expanding and it's gonna, you know, pe some people are gonna have to pay for it. So the committee asked me if there was any evidence that pri that uh, prices would go up if this it looks like a lot of people coming in. Um, and uh, so I looked at it and my methodology was there was a competing complex about two miles away. In other words, buyers look at right. my property, which is Kelly Greens and Lexington. But Lexington in 2015, what they did was they actually upgraded. They did all the improvements that the the project that hired me to do um didn't do or proposing so what i did was i looked at in each in each development there's all kinds of different size homes and models home but i tried to pick the models or the condos that were most similar in size but but in two different complexes so what i did was i tracked all sales and in 2015 Lexington, which is the competing complex, already sold for a bit more. It was a little bit newer, about five or six years newer. Um, but you, you can see it's relatively, um, you know, um, you know, it's not a huge, huge price difference, about $13,000. But after they put the amenities in, the prices went up. Meanwhile, the, 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 my, my clients, uh, um, information, you know, my uh, sales and my clients development didn't have those. Oh, my bad. Hit the wrong button. Jack, you still with us? I think I kicked you out. He'll be back in a minute. He'll figure it out. Sorry about that, guys. It looks like he's still on. He's just muted. He just has to sure. click the yeah. unmute. I'm trying. Okay. My bad. Okay. Can I actually disabled your camera and microphone. My bad. What was that? Was I that bad? No, sir. No, sir. I clicked the wrong button trying to get that uh, image to Miguel. That was my bad. So you know. So what I did was I just I plotted the the I used the data, and I analyzed the data to to determine 
the trajectory of the two different complexes after a particular event. And basically you look at it, the, the dark blue or the black or whatever the color is, uh, represents um, the competing Lexington. The, the, um, the red going down um, is the complex that hasn't done uh, completed any of the amenities. And um, you know, that's, just, that's raw data. And um, while the data is dispersed a little bit more than I would prefer, um, there we go. While the data is, um, you know, dispersed a little bit more than, than ideal, it, it's obvious to, to somebody there's a difference. The other thing I wanna comment on this is that um, when conveying the data, this is a very simple graph, right? It's actually not a very impressive graph, um, but, impressed. but but here's the thing. The audience on this, it was a bunch of 60 to 80 year olds, okay? I, I created a very, very simple graph that just showed straight line uh, regression, very visual, very simple, not fancy, because that was, the, that was my audience, you know? Um, so let's talk about that for just a moment, right? You said that you created a very simple visualization because your audience, because of who your audience is. And so that's something that I've always stressed with my students is you have to know who your audience is. You don't want to over, you know, you want to give plenty of information without overstimulating because the moment folks have too much information, they just shut down and they stop listening to you, right? This yeah. one's quite easy to understand. You can say, okay, Competing properties going up, your property's going down, right? Yeah. And a little numeric summary at the bottom, you know, very simple. 2015, we were, um, you were here, they were there. 2019, you went down to 137, they went down to 194. Percentage down, percentage up, done. And um, so somebody can look at that graph. Like you, you can all look at that graph and say, hey, where would you rather buy, right? You'd rather buy the, uh, or invest in the one that's um, in the right direction um, than the one that's. Um, yep, so if you bought in 2015 and you bought in Lexington, you did good, right? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and just just to, I, whenever I tell a story, whenever I hear a story, I like to hear the ending. The, um, the people from the Red Association there, they voted it down. So so it'd be a couple of years. So they, they, did, they still decided not to go forward with it, but. That's their problem. So they're, they're not going to put any of the amenities or anything like that in? No, they needed a two they, they got a majority. They needed a two thirds vote because of the um, expenditure size. I mean, this, this is a multi million dollar project. Um, and it would have been assessed the, the owners. And um, there was a majority, but not a uh, super majority. So, well, they're probably looking at it like, look, I'm 65 years old. It's going to take you five years to do this. I might not even see the end of it. Sure. Part, you know, of, part, part of the argument. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Whereas someone that's, you know, our age, we'd look at this and say, I still have a good 20 to 25 years of, it, of investment to look at. Or some of the students here, they'd say, if I'm going to invest in this or I inherit it from grandma and grandpa, I'm going to want to put more money into this. Right. That's right. And get something out of it. So. Absolutely. So, but uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's using, um, that's a kind of a macro or a, uh, just a regression um, approach to, um, to looking at it. Um, each one of those dots, some of them are higher or lower on each of the different sets. And those are variations, you know, the ones that, the red dots that are higher, probably were in better condition. The ones that are lower yeah. were the ones that are in poor condition, but overall the median um, you know, told a pretty compelling story. And uh, one in one theory um, that I have, and it's kind of a, a elasticity demand issue, and that is, I think this project is going to have even more problems going through because in good times, in normal times, and in good real estate times, the difference between a properties that have a particular deficiency and ones who do not it's always going to be there, but when the market turns and there's less demand, that gap tends to widen. So I actually think that going forward, if the if the economy struggles by a COVID or whatever is the cause, um, that I think that there's going to be an even wider disparity uh, discrepancy in the, the prices um, of this complex. But who knows? Time will tell. <laughs>
Good. Good. So before we move forward, class, do y'all have any questions for Mr. Lavoy on this? I was just thinking of you were talking about your audience. So when is a good time to have a more advanced? Uh, I know this is like a, I, I chose a subtopic off of the whole thing, but sure. when would you, when would you uh, show like an advanced look of, of data and and how, and how would you illustrate it to, to an audience? Yeah, um, if you you sound very knowledgeable right if it was a group of peers that were certainly like data analysts or, or people who are looking at financial reporting and looking at just use of analyzing data on a regular basis then it would just be you would you know it would just be a more you know detailed it might be you know seasonally adjusted it might be um you know it might go in and and pare down and um you know look at you know start eliminating some of the data points and just you know but it just needed to be a a simple vi visual for for this particular audience because we're talking about retired couples that haven't looked at a graph like that i mean they don't they don't make decisions based on looking at graphs so i had to put something very simple but it's really it's the it's the not the not the intelligence because the, these these members are are smart i mean they they didn't get to retire down in Florida with a second home because they weren't smart. Um, so it's not an intelligence thing. It's just a, they're not used to it. Um, if, if it was a um, graduate students and, you know, in the financial sector and look at it, it would just be, we would do something more, um, more um, detailed and more, more elaborate. But, um, but um, this is what we chose here. Yeah, and I was asking because since the beginning, like three years ago, I was complaining to uh, to Joe how we overcomplicate things all the time. And this this was a very simple graph, and it explained everything, right? Like I, you could understand what the cause of uh, the property price going down and, and everything. Right. So I don't see a reason why to overcomplicate things in the first place. So that's why I asked. I agree. I agree. Uh, when, when we do when I'm doing my appraisals. You know, I look at, you know, sometimes my reader, my client is a bank, sometimes it's an attorney, sometimes it's in a judge, a, um, you know, a court of law, sometimes a homeowner. And I always try to think of who, who that is, you know, so so sometimes we might do an analysis. Let's say, let's say I got a property that's on, has a water view and a, and a property that doesn't have a water view. And I have to account for the difference. So I might use a technique called group data analysis where I, I take 10 sales that have wa have water, um, 10 that don't, um, that are very, very similar, and then go ahead and come up with a median, similar like this, but more of a, in, a, in a table format, and shows that maybe, I'm making up the numbers here, of course, but maybe the ones on the wa non-water are selling for 300, and the ones in the water are selling for 340, therefore, difference of 40,000 is attributed to the water. I, sometimes I will take a very, very simple table, right? Just listing the sale prices of, 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 of the water and the, and the sale price of the non-water to the median, show the difference, put that in. So when I'm explaining that, okay, on this particular sale, it sold for 300,000, but it did not have a water view. Therefore, I adjusted it by forty thousand dollars and here's why and i show them and then say yeah that makes sense you know it may be right it may be wrong but it's supported and it's and it's um conveyed in a in a simple manner and that that's what i do in all my reports so um kind of another example i'd show you an example of that but it'll probably take me forever to dig through my computer i'm not uh computer savvy as uh, probably you guys are <laughs> So Andy and Anya, I see your mic is open. Did you have a question? Uh, I had a question. Um, based upon the disparity, as, as you've shown us, and it'll probably grow due to COVID, um, what is sort of the future regarding uh, neighborhoods and wanting to allow um, home buying and selling? Um, and I'll, I'll give an example. If uh, there's an older community, and they 
um, are more susceptible to to um, to getting sick due to COVID-19, will they be more willing to allow buying and selling within their neighborhoods? Yeah. For... Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, I mean, right now, since that video, um, most states, I can tell you, I'm familiar with two, two states intimately, and that is Florida and New Hampshire. And um, both states have put a moratorium on open houses. I talked about people going to open houses. Well, now you, you can't hold an open house. Um, there are restrictions on um, showing property. In other words, they, you can't have more than one party at a time looking at it. And they allow one, a, a couple, two people plus the broker, three maximum people in the house at, at one time. Um, so they're putting in res restrictions. Um, I, I don't know about the long, you know, who knows what the long-term effect and the health and safety issues would be. Um, I think right now, almost every type of property, whether it's just a, a single family home by a younger couple that maybe has got a couple kids or a uh, 55 and older um, complex that's got a bunch of 70 year olds, they're all doing the same precautions right now. Um, it'd be prudent, obviously, to even be more safe. And I think if I was somebody that was in the high risk factor, I don't even know if I'd want to have my home on the market right now. But it'll be interesting to see just in everyday life how the health effects treat how we do almost every business. So that's really kind of an unknown. Um, I um, how that'll affect the practice of buying and selling real estate. I know right now it's very structured, very limited, very safe, safe um, um, or they, I should say they're not safe, they're making safety, a lot of the best safety measures they possibly can. Uh, so that's probably not I, a, good. I actually have a friend who's a broker and uh, he was going to be here today, but he had showings today. Sure. The reason why he couldn't be here. Uh, he actually has five showings today but every one of them are in jobs where they absolutely know they're going to be secure. Two of them are police officers. One of them is an EMT and the other two are either a nurse. I think it's a nurse or a PA, a physician's assistant. Yep. It, they know that their income is going to be secure and it's probably going to go up because of COVID-19. So they're looking at this as an opportunity to go and find a bargain price on a house because they feel that, if nobody else is buying, they can bid the price down. Absolutely, and um, and he's a friend of yours, so I assume is he he's in Florida. Yes. Yeah, in Florida, if I did a video in Florida, it's totally different than um, up, up in New Hampshire. I mean, prior to this, you go and you um, um, you have a listing, you put it on the market, and you literally have twenty people looking at it the first day, and you have multiple offers. It's just crazy. Mm. So they had that built-in buffer. And here in Florida, the market is totally different. Um, it's, it hasn't gone down over the last year or two, but it's had modest, modest pockets of, of um, price appreciation or price rising prices. So it's more susceptible to, to, to a turn. And I, I agree. Um, in, in Florida, my, I'm still kind of putting my, uh, my uh, grasp on it or my um, hands on it here, but it looks like the demand has really softened and even you're right he's got five people looking at it but he might you know there might he might have had 20 buyers prior and i do think um that there's going to be a price correction and uh, there's probably going to be some bargains um to had um in two ways one the natural prices go down okay but even if a price uh, if a two hundred thousand dollar property goes down to 180 there's an opportunity for people to find more distressed sellers in that 180 price range because of, because of the fear and everything too. So so if all the houses were at 200, now you might get some sellers that sell for 190 and 210 around there. So if it goes down to 180 and you get some more fear, there might be some people that own $180,000 houses that want to sell it for 150. So it will bring an opportunity for those who are willing to buy for the long term. Uh, I wouldn't want to buy for the short term right now because I think you have to be able to buy knowing that you're going to own the property for several years just in case there's a deeper correction than we think. But 
if you if you're a homeowner you want to buy a home and you're gonna you know figure you're gonna be there for five to seven years go do it yeah but price hunt and get a good deal on it <laughs> so i have a quick question um, looking at your graph and talking about some of the more complex tools one of the tools that you could use for like the lexington versus the manners might be to do an a b test where you simply look to see if the difference is statistically significant mm -hmm. i suspect that it is because one of them has grown by 11 percent, the others dropped by 15 percent. so i'm pretty sure that there's a difference sure. do you ever do anything like that with your data uh yeah we we, we do um the on for for like larger projects you know not on the normal course of you know, I mean, we we go with a little bit more of a straightforward, simple approach on the on the typical appraisal. But like I did, I did an analysis on uh, cell um, down in Florida. Here we have this cell towers everywhere, and they're in near all the developments, and people don't even notice them. But I'm in New Hampshire, where it's more rural. All of a sudden, they bring a cell tower in a neighborhood, in a subdivision that's a bunch of trees, and the neighborhood the neighbors just lose it. So I I did some studies up there. Um, that had to take data, you know, sales near cell towers or not. And, 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 you know, that you're running multiple tests because you're going in front of, you know, you're, you're going in front of, um, you know, um, town officials, board of appeals, you have, you know, you have hordes of, of uh, people for or against it that are showing up in this meeting. So it just requires, you know, a very in-depth. And the last thing you want to do is you want to, Put something that's um, not statistically sound. Um, so multiple checks. Um, when I do my appraisal, um, when I, I use that example of a forty thousand dollar adjustment, um, by using that group data analysis, the the view versus no view. Again, I just made that up as an example, but there are. I will go and I will say, okay. Then you use your reasonable and say, okay, does that make sense? And then you do go back and maybe use a couple of different techniques to double double check it you know um okay let's look at what what did, what did let's go back 10 years you know a few years ago and when those were newer construction what did the land sell for oh the 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 lots sold for 125,000 on the water and they all sold for 90,000 on the for the non-water boy 35,000 and i said it was 40 that's pretty close you know so it's another way of double checking so you always definitely do always want to use more than one look at it and have a you know a, a checking system like you said so gotcha. Gotcha. do the rest of y'all have any questions we got about 10 minutes left here so do y'all have any more questions right uh, i had the one about um, inflation what what happens if inflation right rises this year what happened to the prices of properties um i would estimate that they will they will start to either increase in value but you won't have as many buyers for them. And that also influences the interest rates, right? So, right. I don't know. It, it's, a, it's a complicated issue that's, that's pro, pro, properties, whether they go up or down, it's, it's based on many factors. One of them certainly is um, in the interest rates on the mortgage and also inflation. Certainly if, if there's inflation, you know, if a gallon of milk is going up and a price of car is going up and in theory, you know, if, if wages followed, you'd have to pay people more in theory, then um, then there would be there would be some upward pressure on. On uh, prices, however, if you have people that are, you know, higher unemployment, um, then they looked at the mortgage and they say, OK, I, I used to be able to get it at three and a half percent. Now it's going to be. 5%, um, which means I can afford less, it's going to cost me, I can afford less for the same amount of money because of the mortgage. Um, you know, that would, that would, that would hurt prices going the other way. So I, here, here's what, here's, here's my personal opinion. And it's, it's based a little bit on um, what happened after 9-11, um, which is the last major historical event that happened in this country that that just ripped through the um through the um market and that was different than the mortgage crisis which was a big economic um cr you know um crisis and 9-11 there was a period of time afterwards where people were just 
scared. They didn't understand they were buying. And there was, there was about six to nine months worth of real estate related. I mean, there's all kinds of other ramifications that it was prices everywhere did decline just, you know, natural. And that's taking the inflation out of it. I get it. And I, and I think that there's going to be some downward pressure, at least in the short term, just because of the unknown and the economy until, until people start feeling good, um, obviously health wise first, but, but, but the, um, you know, having confidence in the economy that things are like at least maybe not back to where they were, but at least heading there. So, um, Florida, I think would feel it going to feel a little bit tougher than New Hampshire because they, where we started from, right. Um, but, um, but the inflation certainly, you know, if, if, if a cup of coffee is going to cost more than, um, then, then gas prices go up, um, everything goes up, including some upward pressure. So it's just, it's a mix. It's a blend and which, which factor is going to influence the most factor. Who knows? <laughs> How's that for, how's that for a, 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 a no, no um, committed answer for you? <laughs> no, that's fine, that's fine. No, I get it. I get what you're saying. No, no. partly it cannot, it cannot be predicted. I mean, it's it's until we get there that we get to see, okay, I guess prices are going to go up, which is which is uh, what's about to happen. I think what what is about to happen is that the prices are going to go up, but how is how are they going to deal with demand? Yeah, because they, they were, the, the the economy they were at least like nine nine trillion. Food. So it's just that's way too much. Yeah, a, things as far as um, inter interest rates and everything. First of all, demand, um, supply and demand is the central fa factor, economic force that really drives almost any product. And certainly, if you take a bunch of potential buyers out of the market, this clearly will have a some kind of a effect now it may be that it just holds it from going up when it would naturally want to go up but um it's um it'll it'll be it'll, it'll just be interesting to to see um what 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 happens um i have seen over the last 20 years of my career that that there, there's a level of volatility within the interest rates that doesn't have necessarily a huge huge effect right I, I could, if it goes up a point, the people want to buy, they still want to buy. The people want to sell, still want to sell, maybe even a point and a half interest rate points. Um, but if we're, if we're talking about a major, you know, going from three and a half to five and a half percent, that would, that would, that would have a, that would give um, a lot less affordability, you know, in other words, for a, if you can afford $2,000 a month for a house, okay. You know, and and just making up numbers here again. And before you could do, you could buy a three hundred thousand dollar house, and now that two thousand dollars only um, allows you to, to qualify for two sixty. You know, that's downward pressure. Um, but it all, we'll see. We'll see um, how things work out, and um, hopefully, we can get the everybody healthy first of all, physically healthy, and then we get the economy healthy again because. Um, um, and it's going to be very interesting over the next uh, six to 12 months, which kind of brings me back to the premise of this uh, class, right, uh, Professor, is that is that I am going to, you know, every few weeks, I want to just kind of keep in touch with um, the brokers and buyers. And, you know, I'm even sending out, um, I'm thinking about sending a survey to people who bought, hey, did you factor in, um, you know, um, in your decision, um, almost like a survey at the end. and um, you know, in a, you know, get a survey of those things you can't really quantify, right? Did you think do a survey? You know, send it to um, send it to the brokers involved in the transactions. Yeah. Um, you know, and also send a hey, nice little thing. Congratulations on your purchase. I was wondering if you could help me out. Here's a here's a uh, yeah five dollar Dunkin' Donuts card for your time, uh, whatever. Um, um, if they're still open. Good news here in Florida, there are at least in South Florida here in, in Palm Beach County, there's a donut shop called Jupiter Donuts. They are phenomenal, right? They just wow. opened three new shops and they're doing full menu takeout. So as soon as we're done, I might have to eat further and get that's some donuts. Great. Yeah, no, that's good. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to, you know, I'm going to look at the data. There's more, you know, I alluded to there's more 
you know, data. Like I, I just, I just got an order for an assignment. It's a purchase in New Hampshire, and it with the contract date. In other words, the date that the the buyer and seller got together on this was March 30th, which was well wow. after my video, and um, it was listed for 299.9, and it had multiple offers, and it was under contract for 310,000. And so that's that's just, that. you know, this one transaction, so it doesn't mean anything, but it's just, you know, what I need to do is, you know, in a week or two is compile, take a look at the first month of data that's happened since things kind of got a little messy. And that'll be interesting. And then I'm going to follow up. I'm going to follow up with the brokers, the same, you know, same pool and, and invite some other people and, and just, um, try to get a survey going um, on uh, that we can set up automatically to every set, every sale in a particular market. Say, so, Hey, you know, for the broker, it, it'll probably be, what's that, um, what's that um, online survey thing that you do that's monkey or monkey. There you go. Survey, something, something sweet and easy um, follow up and um, see if we can gather, gather some, some actual data from there. So, in the net, in the remaining few minutes we have, um, if you could just talk about, like, if someone wants to, you know, they're like, man, this sounds really cool. I like what you do. How would someone get started in doing that? Like, what would be an entry level job, and how would they get started doing that? In in my in um, real estate appraisal or or, or um, yes. yeah, okay, um, sure, good question. <coughs> um, so. You, there's, there's a few things. First of all, um, you'd have to find a, a person or a company that would take you on as an apprentice. Um, it's a it's a field that's licensed. Uh, in order to get your license, you have to take a fair amount of classes um, over, um, I don't know the exact, I want to say like 120 hours of classes, which is nothing compared to you guys that are in school right now. So um, there's also an apprenticeship program where you have to work underneath an appraiser for two to three, you know, two to three years and, um, um, you know, to, to, in order to get your license during that time, you can still do appraisals, but the, um, but you're the person that you're working with has to either often inspect the property with you or at least review your work. And there's, there's some protocol for that. Um, a natural progression into the business is to, um, go work for, um, on a real estate appraisal company for, um, to do some, assisting in an appraisal. For instance, um, I've thought about and I'm looking to add potentially somebody that can help input the appraisal. In other words, you, you know, work at a desk, probably most likely from home, and you do a lot of the work necessarily not going out of the properties. You learn, excuse me, a little bit about the appraisal process and everything, learn our software, learn the data sources. And then if that person says, hey, you know something, this was cool, but I really like to be an appraiser. Now you have that knowledge and to 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 work forward. So um, I have brought people in in both ways. Um, selfishly, I've always brought you know said okay, I'd like to hire someone who just stay in their position as a um, um, as a an assistant. But the human being and the wishing people well part says hey, when when they decide that they want to kind of graduate from that, for lack of a better word, you know, I try to get them in a training program so that they can. Um, do appraisal so so classwork um two to three years worth of field work um doing appraisals and a close relationship with um somebody who has to um be your state recognized supervisor appraiser so gotcha. Gotcha. okay but at the end of it it's actually quite rewarding as long as you can uh, absolutely do we have any last questions for Mr. LaVoy before we call I'm good. Hey. I'm good. Yeah, that, I'm fine. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, it's me. All right, so we're good. Good. All right. Thank you. So first off, thank you very much. All right. I we certainly appreciate it. And uh if you don't mind, would you uh, would you be willing to send the data that you use to make that graph? Um, what I would like to do is have the students do some deeper testing on it to see if sure. the results sure. are statistically significant. Of course, 
there won't be anything disclosed. It's your private data, so we're not going to share it. I would just like to be able to yeah, share it's that. Excel, Excel, it. Excel spreadsheet, excuse me, Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you guys can take whatever you want with it. So Thank do you. whatever you want with it. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's uh, appreciated. So, all right. So for the rest of you, right, um, if you look to the left here on the screen, you will see that I've given you a discussion board where you have the data or you have the graph rather, you have the video that we watched. I recorded the meeting. So we're gonna be able to put that up there as well with your permission, of course. Um, and then we will, uh, I'll have some prompt questions for you as well, okay? So you guys go ahead and take care of that as soon as possible. That way we can get started with that. So again, Jack, thank you very much. Uh, I gotta tell you, I learned a lot. I don't know if the students did, but I know I learned a lot. Right. And I, I certainly appreciate you taking time out of your day. I know you've got stacks of work to do and, you know, bills to pay of your own. And thank you very much for coming by and having a conversation with us. So well, thank you. Thanks. Uh, first of all, I enjoyed it. I was hap happy to do it. Um, and um, um, no, I really appreciate it. It was a nice opportunity and it was, uh, it was fun to uh, quote meet the students. And uh, um, if there's another topic down the road, I'd be more than happy to um, assist. So uh, thank you. Right. Well, let's hope in a month, right? You're looking at, hey, man, why is this market skyrocketing like this, right? And that, and that could happen. That could, it could be, it is a theory. Of pent, there could be some pent up demand, and when it, if the, if the factors are in the right, you know, the moon and the sun are in the right positions, and you got all these people who are holding out, you know, it could be. My, uh, it could my be. hope is that they do to the real estate market the same thing they did to the toilet paper market. <laughs> Man. buy multiple houses at once there you go right multiple houses at once bidding up the price on them making everybody yeah. up. then yeah. i'll sell mine and move to wyoming where there's no people <laughs> so all right well thank you very much right okay. and the rest of you just give me a couple of minutes here and um and we'll go from there but well i guess we don't have to again there's just a discussion board there and uh, you guys go over, find that under discussions, right? So you got home discussions and just tell me if you don't have to go into any depth here, but I am assigning points to it or otherwise you won't do it, right? So go ahead and go over to the discussion board and tell me what you think, right? And if there's any questions I don't know the answer to, I'll be more than glad to ask Jack and he'll tell me what the answer is, all right? So thank you all. Thank you, Jack, again, all right? Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thank you.